Welcome back. If we haven't met, my name is Dan. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX. Just a little bit about our pharmacy. We are a compounding pharmacy. What that means is we make our medications completely from scratch. Let's talk about K2 though. This video is about vitamin K2 and there are some very interesting new benefits about vitamin K2 that really dovetail in well with methylene blue. You'll see that in here in a moment, vitamin K2 helps with the electron transport chain. It helps to reduce ROS, reactive oxygenative species, and it really helps to improve mitochondrial health and mitochondrial biogenesis. So let's get into today's talk. All right, vitamin K2, who can benefit from this? Well, there's a multitude of patients that can benefit from vitamin K2. Let's get some of the more known reasons why we should take vitamin K2. The first and foremost is bone health. So going back to pharmacy school 20 years ago, over 20 years ago now, vitamin K2 is really there to help transport calcium to bone tissue. The way that this works, I'm gonna simplify this. Vitamin D brings calcium from our diet into our bloodstream. Vitamin K2, not K1, so very specifically vitamin K2, and we'll talk about the forms in just a minute, MK7 being the most effective, it has the longest half-life compared to MK4. But vitamin K2 takes that calcium that vitamin D just dropped off in the blood and essentially hand delivers it to bone tissue. That is critical. The other thing is we'll see that if patients are just taking calcium and vitamin D3, you can actually make cardiovascular health worse. You can actually calcify your arteries and heart tissue, essentially. You know, we have patients come in and they're talking about their calcium score, their heart calcium score, their cardiovascular calcium score. And what can I do to lower my calcium score? Because you have calcium in the wrong places. You have, you want it in your bone tissue, but it's ending up depositing in the soft tissues of your cardiovascular system, in your heart tissue and in your blood vessels. Uh, mainly your arteries. And so the problem with that is if you have calcified arteries, now they don't flex as well. It can lead to hypertension and a whole host of other issues. So be aware of that. So we need to understand that vitamin K2 is, yes, it is critical for bone health, but yes, it is critical for cardiovascular health as well. So as it says here, people with poor bone health, uh, we're not gonna get into the immune system all that much in today's video, but just be aware if somebody does have a compromised immune system, they're sick quite often. One thing you want to do is just measure, that's an indirect way to measure K2. I'm not going to get into that, but just know that there are ways to look at K2 levels indirectly, and we should be doing that. Looking at osteocalcin. Uh, patients with muscle cramps. We get a lot of patients coming in with restless leg syndrome, and I'm not making any uh, uh, claims here, but just know that if you have issues with muscle cramps, tightness, that Something to be aware of is vitamin K2 can be helpful for that. And well, also magnesium, which you'll see magnesium is one of these, we'll call it a cofactor in today's talk that helps vitamin K2 do its job. So magnesium and K2 um, should be looked at, possibly be paired together. So again, run all this by your medical provider, uh, but be aware muscle cramps could be an issue. People with nerve disorders. I'm going to share with you a couple of studies here today. I'm going to go over them very briefly, but just know there is great information out there, new information that vitamin K2 can help with different types of neuropathy. Uh, there was a study that was done with diabetics, so diabetic neuropathy, and how vitamin K2 is helping with nerve damage. Uh, risks with history of cardiovascular disorders, we talked about that. Uh, two new categories here that I've added to the list. I've talked about vitamin K2 before, but no patients with fatigue. So any type of fatigue essentially can possibly be helped with vitamin K2. Think of vitamin K2 as that lubricant that goes along with CoQ10. We talked about CoQ10 last week. It's kind of the spark plug of the engine of the mitochondria. Going back to that car analogy, vitamin K2 is the assistant, if you will, to CoQ10. It helps to move electrons around in the mitochondria, basically helping to produce ATP. So Think of K2 also as this add-on to methylene blue. We've done a lot of videos about that. Um, so be aware, K2, this is the next vitamin I would encourage all of you to look at, and mitochondrial dysfunction. So K2 
people that come into the pharmacy, they have all types of chronic fatigue, whether it's due to long haul COVID, a chronic Lyme disease, uh, hormone imbalance even too. So these are a lot of pa patient populations that might benefit from K2. Again, we have to be careful though with vitamin K2, it can affect blood clotting. So not as severe as vitamin K1, which we th think about typically with, with blood clotting and blood thinners and so forth and using warfarin. Uh, but K2, we do have to be careful with that. So if you are a patient that is on those types of medications that thin your blood, again, first talk to your doctor about supplementing with K2. So let's just quick talk about D3 though, before we get deep into K2. Vitamin D, it's again, often understood as the vitamin that helps to bring calcium into the blood. And it does a multitude of different things. I've done different seminars on vitamin D3, but just be aware, generally speaking in the functional medicine world, um, you want to make sure we're getting a blood level. And again, talk to your doctor about this, but my opinion between 50 and 80, uh, the typical blood tests on patients that bring labs into our, our pharmacy, they're often deficient in their vitamin D3. So understand that D3 is important in this whole conversation with K2 as well. Um, we of course can make vitamin D3 through sunlight, through our skin, um, but we can also get it from our diet. And I, again, I encourage you to do supplementation. I think that overall for me, this is an easier way to get enough vitamin D and to test appropriate levels. So vitamin K2, what do we know about vitamin K2? Well, it's known as menaquinone, not that that name matters. It is a cofactor for carboxylation. Sorry for all the scientific terms here. It helps to activate osteocalcin. So that was the test that I was saying about. You can't really measure vitamin K2 directly in the blood, but we can look at this carboxylation of osteocalcin, which is needed for bone growth and overall bone health. So osteocalcin, as it says here in the slide, can only bind to calcium once carboxylation occurs with the help of vitamin K2. And again, specifically MK7, which has the longer half-life compared to MK4. We can find vitamin K2 in foods, but generally speaking, we're probably not gonna be getting enough. And so just be aware of that. But dairy, eggs, meat, natto, which is fermented soybeans in that picture there. Um, comment down below. I I've never had natto. What does it taste like? Uh, please leave a comment on that. Maybe try to convince me if I should be eating this on a daily basis. As I mentioned just a moment ago, MK7 is what we want to look for. When you're reading the, um, which I encourage you to all do this, hopefully we are doing this. When we're buying supplements, we should be looking at the supplement facts. Salt forms of vitamins, in my opinion, is critically important. We can't be just buying something that looks, you know, in fancy packaging and it's, you know, we're getting it for a deal. You have to look at the salt form, turn the bottle around, look at the supplement facts. Is it MK7? Is it MK4? Does What is it? What's even in the bottle? So um, the one that we use here at our pharmacy is, is MK7. That's the one that we sell. It's dairy, gluten, soy, and GMO free. So the, this slide is specifically talking about the the product that we sell here. Um, but look for, and this is something too, you wanna to dig deep in this, just because it says MK7, ask the person that's selling it to you, is it in their cis or trans isomer? Which one is it? You want the trans isomer that is bioactive. So right now the technology isn't out there to get rid of all of the cis isomer. So ours is 98% of the trans isomer. There is a little bit left of the cis isomer, which essentially doesn't have any activity. So be aware of that as well. That's if there's one take home point in today's video, the trans isomer of K2 in the MK7 form is what you want. In my opinion, again, talk to your doctor. So that is super, super important causes of K2 deficiency. So this is something too, like, right. I mean, are we going to take a supplement for everything that I talk about on this channel? No, but just be aware. There are some issues here that again, might pertain to you that could be problematic. So we talked about the diet just a moment ago. If you don't eat uh, you know, natto or um, grass-fed beef, uh, fermented foods, if you're not eating uh, grass-fed butter, I love the carry gold, by the way, that stuff is fantastic. Um, you, again, check your level indirectly, of course, uh, and see if this might be something uh, where you need to take a, a supplement. Uh, poor gut microbiome. So there are two strains of bacteria that I could find in research, the 
bifidobacteria and the lactobacilli uh, bacteria can help produce vitamin K2. Uh, and so if we've been on a lot of antibiotics, we might have killed off these beneficial bacteria and now we, our bodies cannot produce vitamin K2 as it once did. And so that would be another reason possibly to supplement with K2. Liver and gallbladder issues. I should do a separate video on the negative effects of removing your gallbladder, having your gallbladder removed. Of course, there's risks with having gallstones in your gallbladder. We all know this. Um, my point is you need proper liver and gallbladder function in order to absorb vitamin K2 properly. So just make sure if you have your gallbladder removed, in my opinion, again, you might want to make sure that you're taking some type of ox bile or some type of supplement to with lipases in it to help absorb uh, lipid soluble vitamins, which vitamin K2 is. And if, for those of you that don't know, there's vitamin D that is also fat soluble, vitamin E and vitamin A. So if we have gallbladder liver, liver issues, again, I would encourage you to um, look at ox bile or some type of lipase to help some type of bile salt supplement to help improve the absorption of these lipid soluble vitamins. And then certain pharmaceuticals, we just talked about antibiotics uh, negatively impacting the microbiome. So that could be a problem. Uh, bile acid sequestrant. So that's like uh, your cholesterol uh, agents. Um, I imagine a lot of patients aren't on that type of product, but if you are, that could be a, prob a problem and you could be low on all your fat soluble vitamins for that matter. And then high doses of calcium or D3. Uh, if you get too much of those, it basically it, it um, messes up the teeter-totter, if you will. You have to have a right balance of D3, K2, and uh, you have to have the right balance of calcium and, and K2. So again, it's all things to be aware of. Clinical tip here, um, K2 works best. We touched on this just a moment ago, but just to recap, you need D3 to bring calcium into the blood and then K2 will drop it off at the bone tissue, but also magnesium. For those of you that don't know, you need magnesium to help activate vitamin D3. So very synergistic item. It also is helpful with K2 and then adequate protein. We want to make sure that we're getting a clean sources of protein. I recommend grass fed, grass finished beef, um, cage free eggs. So just be aware of that. Addressing K2 deficiency is not only about intake, but also about absorption, activation, and transport. So all of those things are critically important. So. All right, so we're talking about vitamin K2 in this new information, well, newer information about its benefits on mitochondrial health. So vitamin K2 can really help with fatigue and here's how. So it possibly, the science isn't great out there, more research is needed, but being part of the electron transport chain and helping to produce ATP is fascinating to me. So especially somebody with fatigue, let's look at uh, possibly supplementing with K2. If we've tried everything else and nothing's working, or maybe you're on CoQ10 and other agents to help, with mitochondrial repair. I know a lot of you who are watching this channel are subscribed because of our Methylene Blue videos. I would encourage those that aren't subscribed, might be a good time to subscribe to our channel, give this video a like. We wanna make sure patients are paying attention to some very basic uh, functional principles that can help improve their physiology. We talked last week, I did a seminar on CERT1 and GPC1-alpha. There's a whole cascade of different genes, different enzymes, essentially cofactors and such that can produce more mitochondria in our body. And we, vitamin K2 has been implicated in improving this process. So, and then also reactive oxygenated species. So K2 can help to uh, preserve ATP production uh, under high amounts of stress by getting rid of all of this oxidative uh, damaging products that are out there, these ROSs as we call them. And then increasing glutathione. For those that don't know, glutathione is, think of glutathione as the master antioxidant. It's, I always say it's 10 times more potent than vitamin C. I don't have a study to, to prove that to you, but I, that's the way I think of it in my mind, that glutathione helps with liver detox and liver cleansing. And it just, it's a very strong antioxidant. So, and then it promotes autophagy. So vitamin K2 can basically help to clean up uh, and keep cells more robust and keep them working 
I think of almost vitamin K2 as the WD-40, keeps all the gears moving, keeps all the production of ATP working smoothly. So helps with the electrons and moving those around, but then it also helps to remove the, the metabolic waste and the ROSs. And then it just helps the cells uh, to keep clean and, and functioning properly. Uh, I talked about the diabetic neuropathy a few minutes ago. So it de how does it do this? It helps to de decrease uh, inflammation. So there's a multitude of different ways here. So it decreases IL-6, uh, 1 beta and TNF alpha. It also helps to suppress the NF kappa uh, B pathway. Think of NF kappa B. If you haven't heard of that before, that's kind of the master switch of inflammation. If, if NF kappa B is turned on, we've got, we typically have some serious health issues to, to look at. So be aware of that. And then reducing C-reactive protein. I call this the crap protein. So you can measure C-reactive protein quite easily. You can do that here, even in the pharmacy. So you can do it at your doctor's office. If you don't know what your C-reactive protein level is, I would encourage you to, again, talk to your doctor. This might be something helpful to uh, figure out if you've got inflammation, if your C-reactive protein's elevated. There's a lot of other things out there to take to help reduce CRP, but one of those things that might be missing is vitamin K2. So be aware of that. Yep. All right, so that is today's video. I'm glad you stuck with me to the end. If you aren't familiar, we do have now a private label of supplements on our Shopify account. So it's just mdcustomrx.shop. I encourage you to check that out. For new customers, we have that discover15 off code that you can see here. So I encourage you to take a look at that. If you have any questions on anything I discussed today, please put those comments below or give our pharmacy a call. We are still a brick and mortar pharmacy. Uh, I just talked to a few patients that watched our YouTube videos earlier this week. And so, yes, we answer the phone. We're old fashioned here in that way. We will talk to you and spend time and, and help, help you figure things out uh, on your health journey. Again, please remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video.